Neil recently made a great video over on GMBN about nine of his favorite things that he's kind of acquired over the years. And I just thought there's so much stuff I could talk about, so I'm shamelessly gonna do exactly the same, but with a bit more tech. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that we actually work with a number of cool brands. Uh, Nootproof bikes, Canyon bikes, POC helmets, Shimano shoes, uh, Muck Off, Topi, the, the list goes on. There's loads of stuff that we use in our videos, but everything that's gonna appear in this video pretty much is stuff that I've had for years and it's nothing to do with any of this, okay? So it's important to say that because prior to working at GMBN, I was a journalist and had been for about 16 years and in that time, tested literally thousands of different products, including bikes, waterproof jackets, like literally everything you can imagine. Because of that, I'm really quite critical about what I choose to wear, what I choose to ride in, the tools I like to use. You know, I've got a bit of a bespoke toolkit behind me with very hand chosen things that I wanna to use to work on my own bikes. So everything in this video has got a story behind it. But we're gonna start with something quite simple actually. Okay, so on to the first thing, and well, proper tubeless valves are what I wanna talk about. Now, I'm always chopping and changing tires and wheels between bikes, different sizes, and of course, for different videos as well. That means I can't have the, just a pain in the ass scenario of setting up tubeless and spraying stuff up the walls and not having a tire that seats well. I have to have my systems down. And the most important thing is the valve. Yep, okay, so this one is a muck off one. Um, but the reason I want to include it isn't because it's muckle, it's because of the way they include three different sets of rubber grommets. That is what you need to look for when you're buying tubeless valves, whether it's muckle ones or another brand. Okay, so these ones do have a valve core remover built into them. They do have that nice uh, removable valve core. It's actually black on these ones, which is quite cool if you choose to not run the caps on there. And they come in different lengths and different colors. But the fit is the important thing. When I say proper tubeless valve cores, they need to fit correctly because that is the Achilles heel. If you don't have a good fitting valve into your rim, if it doesn't sit properly into that rim bed, which could be concave, convex, or flat, or even have like little bat, like chamfered beveled edges on the inside there. If it doesn't sit correctly in there, you're gonna slowly lose air. If you've got a slow leak in your system, more than likely it's the valve, okay? So check that on your systems. These are absolutely essential to me because at a rate of which I'm chopping and changing stuff on bikes to make different videos and things, I simply couldn't live with a poor system. Over the years, I've worked out that the valve is the most important thing for me. And yeah, if we weren't running these, I'd be buying them anyway. Okay, next up on my list, Gore-Tex, yep. The Gore-Tex membrane, as normally found in Gore clothing, but you can get it in other brands. I know Patagonia offer Gore-Tex in some jackets. Uh, Scott do, there's a number of brands that offer it out there. Now, there are some other membranes out there. For example, Patagonia, this jacket here, uh, has their H2 No system. Great jacket, I bought that one basically for wearing to the pub. I will wear it out on the bike because of the fact that I know that Gore-Tex is the one. Right now, I've got these old trousers that these are well over 10 years old. They're nearly gone through to the membrane on the bum there, but they're still waterproof. So I'm gonna keep wearing those until they're done. And this jacket is probably about 10 years old as well. Gore-Tex Pro, it's about as good as it gets. The real heavy duty jacket, I've torn the zip off on there. There's a hole in the hood. I mean, I don't really use the hood anyway, to be fair, but it's absolutely brilliant. Now this stuff, yes, it's expensive, but with stuff like waterproof jackets and Gore-Tex technology, you get what you pay for, you really do. And the day that they fail, I would have no hesitation in paying the price to get another one to replace it. Honestly, it's the best stuff I found in all these years of riding. Okay, next on this is tools. Of course, it's GMBN Tech, we work with tools all day long. And I wanna talk a bit about Park Tools. Now, of course, the channel is sponsored by Park, but I've been using Park since I reckon I was about 14 or 15 when I got my first part-time job working at the local bike shop in Harrow called The Bike Shop. In fact, here's a shot of me with the owner. His name's Malcolm Fryer. Big shout out to Malcolm for teaching me more than you'll ever realize you, you taught me. Um, I actually went back and saw him a couple of summers back in a shop. I'm so pleased to say it's still cracking on really well. Anyway, their workshop was all fitted out with part tool stuff, so I became very familiar with it at an earlier age. 
And really, over the years, I've chipped away building up the collection of things that I love the most and that I need to use in my own workshop, including my favorite all-time tool, which is this. It's just a Parker AWS 10. It's just a multi-tool. It's an Allen key multi-tool. It's got all the key ones on there, except for an eight, which you'd want on a separate key anyway. And as you can see, it's so old that the color doesn't even resemble what the part of tool blue is that everyone actually knows. And in fact, Sorry, Eric at Park Tool, and sorry, Calvin, but I know that you sent me this lovely new one to use, but this is the one I always reach for. It's old, I don't even know how old it is. Um, it's, it's well over a decade old, probably near 15 years old, looking at the color of it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even older than that. But the fact is, your Allen keys are such good quality, they're all still nice and sharp. It's just automatically the one that I reach for. It's the one that's always in my bag when I go riding as well. It always goes in the back of the car with me. It literally is pretty much in my pocket, my jeans most of the time. Uh, absolutely brilliant stuff. And yes, when it does get a bit more knackered, I'll, put, I'll retire it to the shelf and I'll start using this lovely new part tool blue one that you sent me. But in the meantime, it's got to be the old school one because it still works. Okay, the next one is actually a tool sent to me as part of the job uh, for using in videos, but I wanna show you how I got there. So I've had this old, avid hose cutter for a very long time. Of course, you'll know them as SRAM these days. That's how old it is. It's essentially like a cigar cutter, the sort of thing you might see uh, gangsters in films using to cut off people's fingers and stuff like that, except for tiny little hydraulic hoses. Brilliant tool, but the thing it lacks is the ability to put the little inserts into the hose. And I've seen people doing this with pliers and hammers before. I oh, don't do that. You're gonna damage the hose. What you need is a dedicated tool. So I was very happy when Calvin sent me this. So you've got the hose trimming tool on here with the spare blade, literally for trimming the hose there. But you've also got a little clamp on the end. And if you look closely, the little tool for inserting the insert, basically the barbed insert into the hose, perfectly flush, 90 degrees in as it should be. It looks a little bit more industrial, I've got to say, than a lot of the part tools, but it works so well and it makes my life easier. Genuinely couldn't live without this tool now. The amount of brakes I have to change on bikes, swapping them left to right, putting on a new longer rear, swapping the calipers from two pots to four pots, etc. I'm constantly messing around with brakes and that is one of my most used tools. No hesitation in buying one of them. Brilliant piece of kit. There is one more thing though I want to reference. As you can see, it's got a bit of black tape around it. It's in a bit of a sorry state because I haven't used it for a while, but the Park internal cable routing tool is one of the best things known to mankind. Now, I bought this with my own money in 2016, maybe 2015. Let's say 2015, it sounds better. So a long time ago, and I bought this in pure rage because it seemed the entire bike industry lost its mind trying to hide cables and hoses on the inside of bikes for, for no good reason other than aesthetics. It was a nightmare to try and feed in the hoses and to get them out the other end of the frame because there was no internal channels and literally no brand did it right. It was a nightmare. And yeah, I used to suffer from major rage in the workshop. I had to buy this tool literally to stop myself smashing things up in anger. And I've got to say that is one of the best purchases I've ever made. But weirdly, I don't get to use it as much these days. I'll always use it on seat posts on the bikes we swap over. But really, a lot of frame manufacturers have clued up to this. Some are still using some external routing. Some like Canyon have used external routing that's hidden in a shroud, which is quite a cool approach. And others like Santa Cruz, for example, have got like full carbon inserts on the inside of the frame. So you just feed the hose in, it pops out the other end, as it should be. Uh, but nonetheless, I wouldn't have got this far without this tool. So that one is an absolute necessity. It would definitely come in handy again, worth its weight in gold. Okay, next up is a pump. Now the first pump that I ever owned was an SKS pump and I've still got, I think it's in, in the back of my dad's garage actually, uh, made from cast iron, still going strong, just a bit outdated now. And I'm sure there's a few of you out there that might have seen those SKS pumps over the years. But I wanna put this big boy in, a Topeak Joe Blow Booster. Right now, disclaimer here, we work with Topeak, but I've had this since 2016. I got this one myself. Uh, this is nothing to do with the channel, just by chance we're using them. And in fact, they actually tried to send me a fresh one because I think the logo is different or something's changed on it, but I wasn't really interested because I actually feel quite attached to this one because it's so solid and it works great. Now, a bit of story behind this. 
I've been using tubeless from the beginning. When, when UST first showed its face as a publicly available thing, uh, long after the Michelin system that you could get in the 90s that a lot of pro racers like Steve Pitt used, the UST system relied on Hutchinson tyres, Michelin tyres and a few other smaller brands. Now I rode all the different tyre options and was sold instantly. So the tyres weren't necessarily the best options at the time, but the system was fantastic. Skip forward a few years, then Stans came out with their no tube system, allowing you to use any tyre with any rim combination, because it had a rubber rim strip with a valve cord built onto it. Now when that came out, I was like, bang, all of my bikes going tubeless from this second on. There's no reason to have any tubes any longer. The system, I think Stans, we should all give a big shout out to for actually developing that system. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. But the one problem with it was inflating the actual tyre in the first place and getting it to seat. Some tyres would play ball, other ones would be horrendous. And this is what's given tubeless a bad rep. Spraying uh, like the sealant and all up your garage wall or worse in, in the front room and that stuff is disgusting to try and get off. So unless you've got a compressor, which I never did, I'd struggle a lot of the time trying to get them inflated. And on worst case occasions, I'd end up using CO2 cartridges just to get a rush of air in to really try and expand the, uh, the sidewalls and get the bead into place to lock in. So when Bontrager came out with their flash pump, I think it was called the flash, uh, in 2015, I bought one straight away. Had to have it, bought it, didn't even look at reviews online. Um, you know, we hadn't even reviewed we hadn't even reviewed one at the magazine as far as I know when I got one. Uh, I was so desperate to get one, I just paid full retail for it, no problem with that. Used it for a while, it was good, a little bendy, but then a bit later that year, or maybe in 2016, is when this one came out. I had one go on it and I was like, same thing, I had to buy it straight away. Brilliant piece of kit, can inflate any tubeless tire pretty much. Bang, first time, and that is exactly how it should be. And like I said, that's my pump. That's nothing to do with us working here uh, with Topeak. But that's it, that's all you need to know. Lovely bit of kit. Okay, the next tool, again, I've referenced this one a few times, is a pair of Nipex locking adjustable pliers. And this is the big boy 250, so it, it does up to 46 mil, I think it is, on here. Now, if you've looked on the Toolbox Wars on Instagram, in fact, there's a little link at the bottom of the page there, um, or any of the pro mechanics on the World Cup scene, you'll have seen inside their mobile toolkits, they will always have a set of these. If you know, you know. These are probably one of the most useful tools I've ever had. Now, I do want to add on a couple more sizes, a couple of small ones, because they're so good that my adjustable spanners and that are just redundant. Now, these work for everything. They've got machined flat surfaces on them. They will not damage things, even like fork top caps. Yeah, and I can feel a few of you raising your eyebrows here. Yeah, I've used these to do fork top caps in the past. Yeah, all right, you should be using a socket. But these will do it and they won't damage anything. They are brilliant. Now, I actually bought these for building this workshop. Uh, this was before using them for bikes and realizing just how versatile they are and noticing that everyone else seems to be using them. But they're a really good tool. I use them for the coach bolts that we've got. In fact, the whole roof on this, I've got a plate on the side of the house, big bit of wood, held on with uh, bolts that are chemically bonded into the house and then nutted onto those bolts. All of those bolts, there's probably 30 of them, we're tightening with this, and then all the bolts holding the joists above my head. Uh, that's basically what I got this tool for, because it's such a pain in the ass getting the right size spanner because I was using different size nuts, uh, and adjustable just wasn't good enough. Yeah, like I said, if you know, you know. On to shoes next. Now, some people have said I'm the Imelda de Marcos of the cycling world. I have I've probably got hundreds of pairs of shoes tucked around, most of which are old and knackered, but I can't bring myself to get rid of. So as well as all the usual stuff, outdoor shoes, wellies and that, I've got loads of cycling shoes down there, loads of channel shoes that we use in our videos, but I've also got loads of other shoes as well. But the best, honestly, the best shoes I have found for me riding a bike of all time the Shimano ME7. Now, I've actually ridden all generations of this. This is the last generation. Uh, I've had these before we rode with Shimano products, and I've even got the generation before when they first launched it. I've still got that one. Now, these shoes are so important to me as a mountain biker. So they've got a nice slim fit on the foot. They've got the protection you need, but they're not clumpy and big like the downhill uh, brother of the same sort of style shoe. It's got a speed lace system, it's got a ratchet on there, and it's got a sole on it that's really good off the bike. So it's stiff enough on the bike that you can get the power down, but it's got loads of toe flex on there. So when you're walking, it's actually quite natural to walk. 
and it's got a big, heavy, heavy duty lugged outer sole on there for Michelin with, with lugs kind of that remind me a bit of trail running shoes. So they angle inwards on the heels, so to give you traction downhill and the opposite way on the toes for climbing and scrambling up banks. Honestly, there is nothing that's come close in all the shoes I've used over the years. And in fact, let's have a little look at some of these shoes because I'm telling you, I've ridden so many pairs of shoes, it's nuts. I think I've got a bit of a problem. So just in the workshop here, here's a couple of pairs of Shimano's. In fact, there's enough pair of Shimano. Here is the actual, the winter version, uh, the MW7. So essentially the same as the ME7, just heavy duty winter version, but it's got the same feel. Uh, what's down there? A random pair of specialized shoes, some new physique flat shoes I was trying for EMBN, a whole bunch of different things. And in fact, let's um, let's pop up to my loft a second, just so I can show you just how weirdly fanatical I am about keeping hold of this stuff. Okay, so up in the loft, as you can see, there's quite a lot of bike stuff around. I've got my beloved Intense and a few other bits up here to the side. But like I was saying, I keep hold of a lot of stuff which I should probably get rid of. Probably. As... All right, look, there's a lot of stuff up here I should get rid of, but I keep it for good reason, for reference. So just to give you an example about the shoes, I was saying that I've ridden so many pairs, all right? So, um, Specialized 2FOs, brilliant in the BOA system, look disgusting, but work really well. Uh, these are Sombrios, probably the closest thing to 510s in terms of grip, um, but the lace cover kind of curled up on them and they no longer make them, which is a shame because they were really onto something. Uh, Gyro have got the, the Chambers, great shoe, a little bit heavy for what it is, absorbs too much water, gets too heavy, the cleat recess too far forwards, close but no cigar. Oh, these were a bad one, these uh, Gyro winter shoes, kind of looking like an urban hiker boot. The sole, the Vibram sole is really good, it's got little aluminium bits in it, it's made of super soft rubber, so uh, really good for off the bike and it's got little bits of metal in it for grip and traction but the upper, just let water and everything straight in. So again, nice try, but not very good. Pearl Azumi, they are. These were excellent, actually. A really good shoe, super lightweight, except the BOA system, this particular one, used to come undone. Could have done with two of those, like the Specialized shoe. Uh, another Specialized shoe, an old 2FO. Brilliant, you gotta be super quick to run a shoe that, that quick. Uh, they used to rub on the inside ankle, as far as I remember. Other than that, the sole felt amazing. And here, for example, is the Shimano. So this is the first ME7. So this really was an epiphany as far as shoe design goes for me. Like I said, slim on the foot. It's got a nice toe box, nice heel box. It's got the ankle protection you need. Um, toe flex on them this direction, but not much flex for pedaling. Great off the sole for off the bike stuff. Just brilliant. Like I said, I've ridden so many pairs of shoes. And if I could buy one pair of shoe tomorrow to use, it'd be the new version of the ME7. Genuinely brilliant shoe. Cannot live without it. Now, as I referenced earlier, I've got a bit of a thing for shoes, jackets, and bags. Now, I wanna talk about bags because I've been on a quest to find the ultimate riding bag that suits me. And I've really come down to four bags in particular that work for the sort of rides that I like to do and the equipment I need to carry. The first one is this tiny little thing from Evoc, a race belt. I think it's called a race belt anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it says race belt on there. Uh, just a Velcro based thing, uh, enough to put your car keys in there, your phone, and maybe a few minor tools. I actually use this for putting my microphone in when we're filming. Uh, it's super useful, it goes under a jersey, you don't even really know it's on. Great piece of kit, super minimal. I think, unless I'm wrong and anyone else has seen a newer one, that's probably the smallest of the bags available on the market. Really, really cool. Next one is this Camelback Repack. Don't even know what model or what year. Uh, I've had this for a while. The first thing I did was get the, the bladder and bin it off because I don't want a hip pack to carry a bladder in. I want to carry my little camera. Uh, I always carry this little thing with me the tools I need for that ride, a GoPro. In, in fact, the GoPro goes in a stretchy one on the side there. My house keys and car keys and stuff go in this zip one along with a multi-tool. It carries the bare minimum. You can do it up really tight, it doesn't move around, and it's great. I'm sure that there's a more modernized version on the market now, but this repack, probably one of the first editions. Uh, looks a bit ropey now, to be fair. I might have to get myself a new one, but it's a great piece of kit, really good. Now I have been using a two laid bag recently, which has got a, like a expandable stretchy waistband system on it. And that is really, really quite good. But I've got to say the Camelback, just for where I can put the load on it, for what I put in it, it really does it for me. Now next up is this Acre. I think it's an Acre supply bag. I've had this one since I think probably 2015 or so. Uh, it's completely waterproof. It's a long bag, so it suits the height of my body. If I'm going out for a longer ride, or if I'm going out in the middle of winter when it's absolutely hammering down, 
that's the bag I'll take with me. Um, it suits me down to the ground. I can fill it up with anything, including a hydration pack. It's waterproof, it's got a roll top on there. So if you want to think you're cool and hip, so you can run it in roll top mode or you can uh, flap it down as well. Like I say, it's just a good, tough, no frills bit of kit. You're paying for the fabric on this, essentially, because it is. there's not a lot of bells and whistles that go with it. Although one thing I do like in particular is the fact you can adjust the height of where the straps sit on you, the waist strap and the shoulder straps. So really good if you're a taller rider. Uh, not even sure if that is still available on the market, but that is genuinely one of the best things I've had from over the years. And the last one is my current camera bag. Any photographer out there will probably tell you the same thing. It's a nightmare trying to find the right bag. Now this is the closest I've come in years. So this one's a CP18 by Evoc. It's the right size and shape to ride a bike in and it's just about big enough to get what I want to carry in there. So I, I used to use Canon stuff and you could get a Canon in here with a 7200 in there. These days I use Fuji. So I've got the 5140, the 90mm, a bunch of other lenses. I could fit everything in here, including the grip. You could fit a full size, uh, full frame body in here with the grip as well, like a 1DX or something. You can get, it's like a compact version of their full size bag, which I do also love using, but really I don't need to carry that much gear anymore. But this one is small enough that you can go for a good ride, carry a good amount of camera gear and be completely unhindered. And even though it's not designed for it, you can squeeze in, but still full from the last shoot, you can squeeze in a 15 inch laptop down the back there, like just as well. So uh, it works pretty well for me on all accounts. But, uh, like I said, behind the camera, there's also one, two, three, four, five other bags uh, that I should probably get rid of that I don't use, really. They are the ones that I've found. Uh, I'm really picky. Anyone else out there picky with their riding bag? Or have you just got any old bag and got on with it and not really considered it? I'm actually quite interested to know from someone that's especially picky about things. Okay, well, finally, the last thing I want to add is um, my spork. <laughs> so think of this what you want, but um, I've had these since they first came out. Now the cool thing about the spork is wherever I'm traveling, wherever I'm around, I know that I've got something that I know where it's been. I can keep this clean, I can use this as a fork, as a spoon, whatever. I don't need to try and sell the principle of a spork to anyone. But it's one of the things that is in my bag or in my pocket wherever I go. So I will always take my car keys, my house keys. I'll always take my phone and my wallet. I'll always take my little trusty camera. This one is a Fuji X100V in case you're wondering. Absolutely love this thing. And I'll always take the spork with me, especially, and this has been highlighted with the pandemic. Uh, if, you know, if you're going to M&S to get a salad for lunch, whatever, I don't really want to use the, uh, the free knives and forks and that are laying around. We're not really allowed to use stuff in the office uh, because the safety is supposed to bring your own things in. The convenience of having one of these, it's great for camping. It's just a great bit of kit. It stays in my bag and because it's metal, I want to keep this for life basically as well. So I've been through those plastic ones numerous times. I always end up getting melted or snapped. Waste of money. Get yourself a metal spork, whether it's a park one or another brand. They're such good things to carry. And yeah, all right, a bit of a random end for this video. Uh, definitely interested though to hear what you think about the things I've chosen. Like I said, it's all stuff that I feel really strongly about, stuff that is really important to me. And there's loads more things as well. You could ask me some more specifics and I could do another video. It could be on just on tools, it could be on riding clothing, it could be on bikes, literally anything you want. I'm quite happy to be quite candid and open about all this sort of stuff. Uh, dead keen to hear what you think. Let us know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Ta-ra.